Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love Hi and welcome to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast, a weekly show about all things Port Adelaide Footy Club. I'm your host, Mac 19 and joining me for the second time on the podcast as co-host, we've got Schultz and Fest. How are you, mate? Hello. Very Great good. Great to have you back on. I'm not recording on a potato this time. <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. And for the first time on the podcast, we are speaking with Dragoon Cody. Hello. How are you going? Yeah, my name is Cody. I'm, uh, I sort of sniped in. Uh, here I have like 12 posts on the forums, but I got, I, I, I got a, a shot, so... Hopefully uh, this podcast goes well. Awesome. Great stuff. Uh, it's your first time on the podcast. Let's find out a little bit about your port supporting background and how you came to support Port Adelaide. All right. So I'm about a fifth generation Port Adelaide supporter, uh, apart from just a, you know, we won't talk about the, the north bit in between, but, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, I'm from a Port Adelaide family. I am... 24, so by the time I was 7, the power had entered the AFL, so um, I've just basically been following the power since it started. Brilliant. Awesome. Uh, what's your favourite match? Uh, probably the 2004 prelim, Yep. Um, just uh, against uh, St Kilda, um, and the, the momentum change caused by... Uh, the, the actual supporters jumping onto the field. Uh, I just thought that was a, that's just a really interesting scenario, I think. Now, what about your favourite player as well? Uh, well, as a kid, it was definitely Gavin Wanganeen. Yep. Um, and at the moment, it would have to be Jay Schultz um, or Tom Logan. I just love the way that they're, they just run hard at it. You know, they're always coming off with some sort of head injury or, you know, that kind of thing, because they're just, uh, they're, they're always heading straight at the ball, you know, yep. a lot of courage. Well, look, let's uh, get straight into it and talk about our love and hate, which is one thing we loved, one thing we hate in and around the Port Adelaide Footy Club. But let's do it for the season to date, as it is by round. Schultzy, mate, I might start with you with this one. Uh, my love for the year is just how quickly everything has come together from two years ago. I mean, we had we have all these first rounders and everything that people keep complaining about on the list, but I still would never have expected everything that's happened both on and off the field to happen this quickly. We've got a reserves team now, we've got our own license, we've got 50,000 members, and we're top of both the AFL and the SANFL ladder, which is just incredible to think about. Two years ago. Imagine two years ago us going in $1.40 favourites against Hawthorne on the weekend. It's mm. just unbelievable how quickly everything's turned around. Absolutely. Two years ago, what were we? Sort of like 15th in the AFL and probably about 7th or 8th in the SANFL as well. So it's been a huge turnaround. Certainly. I think three years ago we lost to Hawthorne by 165 and now we're going in favourites against them. Yep. Can't beat that. What about your hate? My hate is earlier in the year when you made the horrible call that Noob Zor is Tom Jonas's number one fan. <laughs> oh, uh, brilliant. Yeah, boycotted the podcast for a few months, but I decided I'll come back this week. <laughs> fantastic. Love it. That's almost a love. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cody, what about you, mate? What's your love and hate for the year so far? Uh, I think my love would just be how lovable the team is uh you know just it's amazing how many people who aren't port adelaide fans love the club right now uh and just the way that they're playing the game that everyone's saying oh they're you know like a second team and they just sort of play like they're the main characters in a sports movie i think like yep you know they're just always like oh yeah we're hard at it to the end we're the underdogs you know they're slow in the first quarter and suddenly at the end they have some dramatic you know surge it's like it's like a mighty ducks movie or something yep. and i think that might be why uh one of the reasons why so many people have sort of enjoyed the story of um uh, ports games you know and what about your hate 
All right, well, this one is, uh, well, it's a bit topical, but it seems to always be. My hate is all the crying about Port being in the SANFL. Um, just like I, the advertiser today, there's an uh, article by Warren Partland called Magpies Charade Must Stop about how Port, the Port aren't actually the Magpies because they have Paul Stewart, who was from Woodville, West Torrens. Um, isn't that isn't that the most bizarre argument you've ever heard? Has he ever heard of trades? Like, people switch between teams. It's just uh It is a but, stupid argument. It's a, it's a pretty it was a pretty poor article, but we kind of expect that from Warren Partland. He's not exactly a great journalist. And I, I reckon if you look at the two teams on the weekend, I reckon South had just about more imports than uh, than Port did. South had yeah. Matthew Rose running around for him, so I suppose they're not the real Panthers either. Absolutely. He was developed by the Magpies, so, you know. Yeah, but just in general, it's just sort of like every week. Like, I think it's pretty clear that having having AFL-listed players doesn't mean that much on its own because we have a long history of, if you look at the VFL and the uh, Waffle and all this kind of stuff, uh, it's not just dominated by uh, the AFL teams. Um, the reason we're dominating is because our players are in stunning form. Yep. No, you look at wrong. Port Melbourne in the VFL won the premiership a couple of years ago, didn't they? They were the I think yeah. they're the only non-affiliated team in the VFL. I think and look what they're the doing this year as well. Mm. Sounds about right. Mm. Look, my love and hate. I'm going to start with the hate this week and uh, go with the lack of games to three players that I had really big hopes for in 2014. Uh, the first is Jared Redden, and it looks like he's going to miss the entire year without pulling the boots on, um, which yeah. is really, really disappointing um, because we really do need his type of player in the side, in my opinion. Uh, the second one would be Andrew Moore, who was my pick for the big improver of 2014. I thought he was going to push towards the near elite category, um, which it looks like Ollie Wines has sort of uh, has stolen. Um, you know, he, he just he had a pretty good preseason, got injured at the wrong time, missed about three, the first three or four games, um, and just hasn't had a look in. It's almost impossible to get in the side at the moment. Um, and the third one would be Cam O'Shea, um, who had such a big final mm. series last year, such a great season as a whole in 2013. He's only managed a couple of games this year. He, he didn't have a great preseason. He got uh, pushed out of the side in round one. Um, and hasn't really um, been able to get back in uh, for any amount of time this year. Um, and my love, which sort of coincides with that, is uh, the impact of three of our recruits as well. Um, number one, it's got to be Jared Polek, who's just thrilled us with his incredible skills um, and all that pace through the midfield, which is just what we needed last year. Um, Matty White, number two, has just blown everyone away with his lightning speed and goal-kicking ability. And, uh, of course, Jarman Impey has just done some fantastic shutdown roles uh, for a first-year player and has shown plenty of potential with his, uh, with his skills as well. Um, so that would be my love and hate for, uh, for 2014 today. suppose mm. on your hate, that is the one disadvantage of being such a good team. You have guys like Moore and O'Shea who are playing, maybe not great, but playing good football in the SA NFL and they're talented players and guys yeah. like uh, ben Newton and Campbell Heath, Paul Stewart, you can add to that list, but they just can't crack the team because there's no oh, spots right. for them. Right, and, and Tom Logan's probably, I don't know, I'd consider him maybe to be in our best 22, but not our most important 22. Like, there's a few players like that that they're currently in better form than maybe a couple of players in the AFL side, but they're a bit too old or they're a bit, you know, not in the right position. Paul Stewart uh, is another one like that. Fair play to Dom Cassisi because I thought he was just biding time uh, for someone else. Um, but he's had a fantastic start to the season and really deserves his spot in the side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's uh, oh, he's had a few... I don't know, sometimes he kicks it to an opposition player inside their forward 50, like a couple times a game. But he also does a whole lot of work, so it's sort of... Balances I don't know. Out. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the SNFL. Of course, the Maggies played this week. The power had the bye, but the Maggies were going around at uh, Adelaide, uh, Adelaide Oval, Albert and Oval um, against South Adelaide. 
and ran out easy winners by 60 points. They won 18 goals, 14 to 10 goals, 2. Uh, Jakey Need and John Butcher kicked three goals each, uh, whilst Moore, Amon, Robbie Young and Beemans kicked two goals. Um, we seem to be following a little bit of a theme the last few weeks where we have a massive first quarter, we get outscored in the second and then just go bang in uh, after half time and put the game as a contest away uh, by three-quarter time and sort of coast to an easy win after that. Um, how did you guys see the game? Oh, it was about the same as, as you mentioned. We just go out and beat the best the SA NFL has to offer by 10 goals every week. It's a bit sort of blasé now. <laughs> it's a bit. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's good. It's... Uh... It's great to see some of these players that are in in great form that um you know that are just getting a shot working together in a team just uh it is a great benefit to have to have the one club because I think that would really help uh Daniel Flynn amongst others who are sort of uh you know getting involved in the in the culture there and uh, with a supportive team instead of just sort of being in and out in a sort of confusing uh, set up. Yeah, you know, Daniel Flynn would be playing for South Reserves or something if we didn't have the current setup. And you can't. It's just such a benefit to have yep. guys like him and Amon and Burn Jones being able to play senior SNFL football and fast track their development. Absolutely. Um, so, who were your best players? Um, looks like Andrew Morb had a, a very good game, but has got suspended at just the wrong time. You would think. Mm. Yeah, Moore was very good. Um, Campbell Heath was another one who was very good. Summerton does what he's been doing every week for the Magpies. Been a great choice for captain. Um, mm. uh, John, John Butcher, yeah. Yeah, John Butcher, his, apart from his goal kicking, it was one of the best games he's played at SANFL level. He was, yep. took eight, eight marks, I think, had five tackles. His defensive pressure was really good. Had nine shots at goal, but he only got three goals from them, which has been his issue right. throughout his career. Yep. Yeah, uh, Jake Need uh, was a was really good. He he seems to be a lot more consistent now because his problem his problem last year was always that he'd have brilliant bursts and then disappear for like a half. But I think he's uh, becoming a bit more a bit more consistent now. He's had a really good last uh, four or five games, Jake. He need. He's really come into a good run of form, and you know maybe an AFL spot's not too far away for him. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I don't. Know, I, I think at the moment, I think none of them are just getting in because uh, I don't think Ken Hinckley likes to change up the teams after a win. Um, so if they, you know, if they lose a, lose a game, um, not that not that we'll lose a game. Ha ha ha. Take. <laughs> take the lid off, uh, but uh, you know, then they'll, they'll probably get they'll probably get a shot. But at the moment, they're just sort of banging on the door. But uh, yeah, no luck yet. How do we see Tommy Cleary's job on uh, on Eddie, who's been in fantastic form um, for South Adelaide? Well, Tom Cleary's got the easiest job in the SANFL at the moment. I reckon he barely could take a book out at halftime and just sit there <laughs> in, in the goal square. Eddie kicked uh, two goals, I think, which yep. is, he's averaging five, so Cleary did well to keep him to that. Uh, yeah, he did a good job, but I like, I like that he rebounds as well. He doesn't just sort of stick to his man and never touch the ball. He runs off his player, he's got a good kick, he contributes in the same way that Carlisle and Homsch do at AFL level. And yeah... Probably still his defensive side needs a bit of work. He gave away a goal in the last quarter. He slipped over at the wrong time. And while he still occasionally makes a few mistakes that he shouldn't make, but I think there's a, definitely a future AFL player in there. Just needs a bit more experience. Absolutely. What about Campbell Heath? That was probably his best game for the year so far. Um, is he someone that's going to be a bit unlucky this year and might not get a look in? Yeah, I really like Campbell Heath. It's... As I, as we said before, it's the one downside of having a good team that we had Campbell Heath came here two years ago for more opportunity and now he's ended up at a team which is opportunities are about as hard to come by as anywhere else in the league. But yep. right. if, if if we need to call upon him for injury, I'm very confident that he could come into the AFL side and 
do yeah. a decent job. And he's the sort of guy yeah. who you want sort of uh, yeah, 25th best player, that sort of range. Yep. I know this is a bit of an unpopular opinion on the board, but I see where people are coming from saying that the Magpies are too strong, not to the point where we should go do what the Crows are doing and just have random country league blow-ins, but it's so, I feel like it's not even good for our players' development to just go out and have easy 10-goal wins every week. It's not going to prepare them for the AFL and it's not going to show us how they deal with adversity. Yeah. So I'm not. Sh- I think Ross FC mentioned maybe a change that could be made. Not this year, obviously, because everybody's got their contracts and all of that. But in the future, we have one leadership player, which would be Summerton, I suppose, and then everybody else is all our other top up players are sourced from the academy side. So we don't have these fifteen like Raikawaza and Slattery and all of them getting paid. Uh, 400 a week, we'd be sourcing guys like, um, probably guys like Zach Hawkins and Robbie Young would still be playing for the academy if they weren't getting the extra money. Yep. But yeah, I wouldn't really have a problem with that if that was to be brought in, because I think it would be better for the Magpies, not to, not just for the integrity of the SANFL, but for their own development to not just go out and be so far ahead of the competition standard every week. Mm. Yep. I think the Crows rule is that they aren't allowed to have been on an AFL list or played SNFL League footy for uh, for two seasons. I think that's the rule that they're going to bring in or have already brought in, and I think that's what Port is going to follow next year when all our zones have disbanded and we go into more of a, a crow structure, I guess. Well, that's what stopped us getting Marlon Motlop, isn't it? We yeah, had him over right. for training, but he, could, he wasn't eligible because he played Waffle last year. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the thing is, I'm not sure if we are too strong for the competition. Like, I'm wonder. I'm just wondering because obviously we're really great on form right now, but we're not going to be at you know maximum capacity at every point for the next ten years. We're just sort of we're flying high at the mo- so high at the moment that we're top of the AFL ladder, but. Um, we're not necessarily that much stronger if we're having an off... Like, if we came in in 2011 and the merger was in 2011 and that the Magpies were playing as the Port Reserves, we'd probably still be eighth. Oh, like, absolutely, yeah. I suppose that's what I said before about everything coming together at once. It's amazing yeah. how it's all happened. we got the power to win. All right, so as there isn't a, a power game this uh, well this last week, what we thought we'd do is uh, go through a little bit of a, a list management sort of thing um, and look at some free agents and some uh, trade targets that we might look for at the end of the year, have a bit of a discussion on individual players um, that we might see um, come to our club in the future. Um, we'll talk about the free agents first. Um, there's probably four free agents that haven't been re-signed so far that I think the club would be interested in, so we'll have a Bit of a quick discussion about that. I think uh, the first one would be James Frawley, um, who's a 25-year-old key defender. He's played 120 games. He's a former All-Australian. I guess the first big question is, is his price tag too big at $800,000? And B, do we actually need him? Well, I'd, I'd say, like, if we're looking to pay for, uh, you know, a key position player, I wouldn't consider it to be in the back line because our back line is both solid and young, like, there aren't that many people that are going to be retiring from the back line anytime soon. They're just, like, 23, 24-year-olds that are going to be getting better. Yep. Um, like, I think our main problem is uh, Justin Westoff is, like, 28, 29, and Jay Schultz is 28, 29. Um, you know, they're probably the, the players that we might be a bit more worried about. Sure. Schultzy? Yeah, I like Frawley, but I wouldn't pay his price tag that he's asking for for him. I feel like our defence doesn't need him, and he's not good enough as a forward to justify the price tag. Number two would be uh, Todd Goldstein, who's also 25 years old. He's a ruck. He's played around about 110 games and was close to All-Australian in 2011. I guess the same question needs to be asked with him is, uh, with Lobie, do we actually need Todd Goldstein? 
the thing about Todd Goldstein is he just, for whatever reason, he cannot play with another Ruckman. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, he had his breakout year when Hamish McIntosh missed the year with a knee. Yep. yep. Then McIntosh came back the next year and Goldstein's form fell off a cliff. He was playing BFL. McIntosh got injured again. Goldstein came back in and started playing really good football again. And North traded Hamish McIntosh just because there was no point keeping him because Goldstein can't play with another Ruckman. So essentially we'd be spending big dollars on maybe like a slight upgrade on Loby at best because they can't Mm. play together. But, I mean, the thing is, this is one area where our depth, as we know from the last game, is not very deep right now. Um, We've sort of got Loby and then... Redden's, Redden's out for the year and then is going to probably spend another year trying to get back up to his top form. Um, and then Renouf, uh, I mean, I think it probably says a lot about Renouf that he was our sole ruckman and yet they took him off at three-quarter time. Um, he just hasn't been doing enough to stay, to stay in the AFL side as a replacement to Loby, I'd have to say, so... Suppose the point on that is though, we do need more ruck depth, but you don't spend six hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is on ruck depth. There's no. always cheap rucks going around. Yeah. You don't need mm-hmm. a big spend go big spending on somebody like Goldstein when you could go for a I don't know, Lysit, something like that. Somebody in that range who's gonna come a lot cheaper. Yep. That's a fair call as well. Uh, third player we might be interested in would be Shane Edwards from Richmond. He's also 25 years old. He's a midfielder. He's played 140 games. He's super quick. He kicks goals. He's a very good contested uh, disposal winner. Um, he's a South Aussie. Um, would be, we be interested in Shane Edwards? I think the thing about Shane Edwards is he's sort of a genuine, deep, crumbing forward pocket type player. Yep. We've got really we've got Gray, Wingard, Monfries and White who are all really good forwards, but they're all more half forwards. And guys like Sam Gray and Jake Need haven't really stepped up to make the forward pocket their own. So mm-hmm. maybe mm. Shane Edwards fills a need that we don't really have on our list. He's been um stagnating a bit at Richmond in the last couple of years, but yep. doesn't oh, well, everyone, everyone, doesn't everyone's everyone, been stagnating at Richmond. <laughs> Uh, He's probably a better player than Matt White and Joe Schultz were, and look at them now. All right, player number four uh, would be Sean Higgins. He's 26 years old. He's played 120 games. Um, He's more of a sort of midfield utility where he can play as a small forward, he can play off a back flank, and can also play as a midfielder. Uh, A little bit injury prone. Is he someone that we might be interested in? From that list, he's the one I'm most interested in. I'm a really big fan of Sean Higgins as a player. As you said, he can play anywhere. So there's no worry about does he fill a need because he, whatever we need, he can play there. Yep. He's got really good skills. I think he'd fit into our running game plan very well because he is that sort of running player. I think Ken Inkley would really like him and I think he's a player who's got untapped potential that could be fulfilled in our side. If we could partner him with Broadbent off a half-back flank, that would be really difficult to stop for opposition teams having that sort of run along with Pittard and whoever else we end up having back there next year. Yep. It's maybe one thing that we could... Because people are always complaining about Pittard and Impey and whether questioning whether they should be in the side or questioning whether O'Shea is good enough since he's been playing SANFL most of the year. If we could just get that one really mm. skilled half-back flank, which Sean Higgins could be. I really like Sean Higgins. I think he's a bloody great footballer. It's just a matter of getting him on the park on a consistent basis and... Look, he's been able to do that this year and he's having probably his best year in maybe four or five seasons. Yeah, well, we've got the best fitness guy in the competition to keep him on the park and that's something that not only we don't... It doesn't need to just be that we want Higgins. Higgins needs to want Port as well and Darren Burgess and the way the team's going on the field is something that could attract him to Port Adelaide even though he's not a South Australian. Uh, Is Mark J. Mar a free agent? Uh... I don't know. I would have to look that up. Mm. Well, either way, it was when we're talking about ruck depth, I think he, he's the sort of guy who could come in and be like a Ben Hudson for Brisbane and Collingwood for a few years, maybe off the rookie list or something like that, if he'd agree to it. He was a... Um, I think he is South Australian, so it wouldn't be 
too much to ask him to come to South Australia or anything like that. He'd be playing for a better team than Melbourne. And yeah, he's well. certainly a better player than Renouf. Absolutely. Mm. No, he's not a free agent. He's not. Well, I suppose no. you could always trade for uh, him. It's 31, it wouldn't cost too much. Uh, well, let's see. What about Patrick Dangerfield? Just kidding. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, look, let's talk about some trade targets because there's a whole bunch of, uh, of players that might interest Port Adelaide um, at the end of the year. We'll, we'll start at the top of the list and, and talk about some of the Crows players. Um, the first one, I know you're a huge fan, Schultze. Um, we're talking about Lewis Johnston, who's uh, 23, 23 years old. He's a key position forward. He's played about 10 games of AFL. He's a fantastic kick. There's queries over his attitude. Um, it looks like he's fallen behind a few players at the Crows. Is he someone that could interest us? I think definitely. I think he'll come very cheap. He's almost the list material at the Crows at the moment. But there's, we've had so many success stories with turning around guys who have the talent but don't have the application like Johnston. You look at Carlisle, you look at Westoff, you look at Polek, who he brought in from Brisbane. There isn't a criticism that you can make of Lewis Johnston that you couldn't make about any of those guys two, three years ago. Yep. And look at how they're playing now. Mm, but of course, I mean that logic sort of applies to most of the most of the AFL. You say, well, I mean, Port were bad two years ago, and look at us now. You know, who could who couldn't we turn around? Mm. Well, you still, we can't teach talent though. We're, what uh, what we've improved in the last two years isn't necessarily getting more talented players. It's just developing them right. That's what your coach and your fitness guy and all of that's for, and that's what we've improved so much in the last couple of years. We mm. couldn't take... You can't take just any random off the street and turn them into an AFL player, but you can take a talented player who has fixable issues, which is what Lewis Johnson is, and fix those issues if he's in the right environment. Hmm. I think the idea of Lewis Johnson is fantastic. I mean, he's, he's a pure full forward. He can kick a great goal. He's a, a decent mark out on the lead. My main criticisms of him is that he's not all that great in contested situations. He can't really take a contested mark. And his attitude does stink out on the out on the park. He does drop his head. And there are games where, even at SANFL level, where he just might as well not even be out there. Yeah, I wouldn't if... You told me that we're not going to improve him. There's no way I would want 2014 Lewis Johnston, but my interest is based on the fact that I believe that we can fix those issues. Not necessarily turn him into a great contested mark, but we can at least get his work rate up and get him playing desperate football. Yeah. Uh, the next player on my list would be Nathan Brown from Collingwood. He's a 25-year-old key position player, normally plays in defense. He's played around about 90 games uh, for the Pies. Uh, he's 195 centimetres, he's a fantastic stopper, but again, he seems to be out of favour for guys like uh, Jared Witts and uh, uh, Lockie Keefe at the moment, at the Pies. Isn't he injured, or am I imagining that? No, I think he's been playing in the VFL. Hmm. Well, there you go. I could be wrong, though. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fan of defenders who just defend, which is what Nathan Brown is. He offers nothing in terms of rebound. He the belly touches the ball. He doesn't. He's got bad disposal. I just don't think he's the sort of player who would fit into Ken Inkley's game style. Yep. And does he? I wouldn't have him replacing Carlisle Trang over Holm. So it would be purely for depth. And Collingwood would. You know how hard Collingwood are to deal with on the trade table. They'd want far too much for what. True. A bit of cape, key position, yeah. key position depth is worth. Yep. See you later, Ollie Wines for Nathan Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next player on the list is uh, from Essendon. He's 26 years old. He's played around about 90 games. I'm talking about Courtney Dempsey, um, who hasn't played a lot of footy in the last two years. He's someone that we might be able to get fairly cheaply. Um, he's a quick-running defender, can also play up on a wing as well. Yeah, I'm, mm. a fan. I'm a fan of Courtney Dempsey. I think he's a, he's a good player, and he would fit perfectly into sort of the same sort of stuff that Jasper Pittard does for us, but probably a little bit better. Yeah. But... Oh, Sorry, you don't want to say that on this forum, yeah. yeah. Well, I can say it. <laughs> well, Rick's not <laughs> here, is he? So. <laughs> so you can bag him all you want, Macca. Nah, Pittard's all right. He's all right. He's okay. Yeah, but 
he's not the best player in the NFL. No. So some people are better than him. Sorry, Rick. I think Dempsey's one of those players. But um, the fact that he's not on the free agent list would obviously mean that he's still contracted. So Essendon mm-hmm. are just as hard to deal with as um, I mean Collingwood yeah. are. So maybe that would be one to wait till next year or two years from now when he comes out of contract, try to snag him as a free agent. The thing with Essendon is that they're situation is going to be super weird over the next couple of years, especially with the suggestion that 40 players are going to be suspended from playing and all this kind of thing. Like, there might be some sort of mass exodus, or we don't know what's going on, because that there's a catastrophe still waiting to happen there. So, yep. Yeah, on the flip side, I don't think Dempsey was on that list of um, 14 players or whatever it was that the Herald Sun published, so... Maybe if it's just those guys who are going to get suspended and not the whole team, Essendon will be certainly not looking to give away mature age players. No, I'm not so sure. I think on another one who... I like him as a player, but I think what he'd cost on the trade table isn't worth it. Yep. That's a fair call. The next couple of players I'm interested in, um, they're Ruckman. They both come from Frio. The first one's uh, Jack Hanneth, who's uh, 22 years old. He's played 15 games. He's a South Aussie from Central Districts. Um, I mean, how... I, I suppose uh, any Ruckman at Frio is probably not getting much of a a shot because they've got Sandyland. But is he, is he a good... Is he a good Ruck? All right. I'm not that big a fan. I think he's a bit of a Brent Renoff, young Brent Renoff. He's, <laughs> he can Ruck all right, but he doesn't do anything else. He's slow... Doesn't have good skills. Don't think it's a. Don't think he's a Ken Hinckley player. I think okay. he might make it at Fremantle when Sandlands retires, but I don't think he's a Ken Hinckley player. Yep, that's fair enough. The uh, the second one would be Jonathan Griffin, who's uh, coming off a knee reconstruction. Um, he's 27 years old. He's played at the Crows. He's played at Frio. Uh, we were interested in him a couple of years back. He's played 70 games. Well, we should have gotten him instead of Renault, shouldn't have we? Mm. Yeah, Griffin, when he's been given the chance to play as number one rock at Fremantle, he's actually been surprisingly good because he was awful at the Crows. But, yep. I don't know, something happened at Fremantle to turn him into a decent player. He's the sort of guy who um, probably wouldn't expect to be number number one rock at a club, so he might be willing to come to port to play as not necessarily a starting best 22 player, but he would be able to fill in and do a passable mm. job if needed. So I think he's... And he wouldn't mm. cost too much because they've already got Santa Lands and Clark and Hanath, as you already said, so they'd have a good ruck division even without him, so yep. they might be willing to... He's the sort of guy you want to target as a cheap ruck depth option rather than giving up the world for a Goldstein. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yep. He's capable, but he's cheap. That's what you want. The next one who might be a bit more expensive, he's from Gold Coast, it's Charlie Dixon. He's 23 years old, he's played 40 games. He's kind of like their Westhoff, he can play in the ruck, he can play as a key position forward. Um, I think he's had a little bit of a run at centre-half back as well in the past. Um, he's one that really interests me, I reckon he's a pretty good player. Yeah, uh, you had me at, he's kind of like Westhoff. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's take him. <laughs> does, does, he have a, beard. does he have a good beard? He's he got does, an actually. incredible beard. Yeah. Oh, let's take him. He's All got right. the best beard in <laughs> Australia, I reckon. Oh. Well, I think that's settled then. Uh... <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll let Gold Coast know. <laughs> Fill in the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love him, but it's a bit of a pipe dream. All right, next player. He's from uh, Greater Western Sydney, Adam Tomlinson. He's 20 years old. He's played around about 30 games. He's 193 centimetres. We've had a few arguments about this, Schultz. I reckon he's a midfielder. You reckon he's a key position forward? I reckon he's not, maybe not a traditional one, but a Nick Rewalt centre-half forward type who's going to run up to the wing and maybe not kick 60 goals in a year, but he'll lead the competition for marks. He's that sort of player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think reckon he's a the, gun. Yeah, I think the important part is that he... He's a really good player, but because of the unique situation GWS is in, he's not necessarily able to get a a, a position in where he wants to play just because they have about 30 first-round draft picks in the team. 
Yeah, they've got Boyd, Patton and Cameron. That's two number one picks, and Cameron's probably the best young key forward the game's seen since Franklin. So spots are going to be very hard to come by, but that's what you're looking for in a trade target. You're looking for somebody who is good but might be somewhat expendable to his current team. Yeah. Mm. I think, Tom, out of everyone we've spoken about so far, I think Tomlinson's the guy who we should spend the most time on trying to get. Because he feel, he feels a desperate need for us. It's realistic that he'll move, but the problem is, well, he's I think he's Victorian, so we'll have to make an offer that's attractive enough to beat out ten Victorian clubs. Because I'm sure if he says he wants to move, every club in Victoria is going to be throwing something at him and seeing Absolutely. what they get. Mm. Yeah, I reckon he's a gun. I reckon he's going to be an absolute superstar. It's just a matter of getting him on the park and playing regular AFL footy, um, and giving him the confidence to do so. I think. Yeah, I'd happily give up first rounder and change for Adam Tomlinson. It's just a matter of convincing him that Port Adelaide is the place to continue his career. Absolutely. Uh, next player, Jack Trengove. Uh, everyone knows uh, quite a bit about him. He was a former captain of Melbourne. He's 22 years old. He's played 80 games. He's a midfielder, but his development has stalled. He's certainly not the player that uh, I think Melbourne were expecting him to become. Mm. Um, can he be vetoed on name grounds or just being too similar to Jackson? Look, I think we. Uh, I think I think it would be great to have two Jack Tringos in the side. To be honest, we drafted a guy named Jam, and we're not doing any name vetoing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, it, it might be good to have uh, Trangove. I mean, they, they might uh, commentators might get a bit confused, but they always do. But <laughs> they called him. They've been calling him Trangrove for like five years. So why would they stop messing up their names now? Mm. Yeah, commentators don't know our names anyway, so that's not worth worrying about. No, that's right. Mm, yeah, but, I mean, is it achievable to uh, to get him? And what would we so. have to? Uh, what would we have to give up? I think the key to Jack Trengove is that he's South Australian and his problem isn't ability. His problem is he came into the AFL as a super athlete, but he's had, I think he's had a lot of foot troubles over his career and he's sort of just become this slow plodding type. And he's the sort of guy who we offer him a decent amount of money, the chance to play under Darren Burgess and Ken Hinckley in his home state for the top of the ladder team. I think he would absolutely jump at it and tell Melbourne figure something out or I'm quitting I think mm. it's just um, sort of the every all the stars have aligned that would make him a a yeah. sort of player who would really want to come to Port Adelaide yep. but he is still under contract so it would probably take a lot at the trade table unless we waited till next year when he comes out of contract I think they would want a, a top 10 pick our first yep. rounder wouldn't do it. They wouldn't want a first rounder plus change. I think they'd say, well, you've got to find yourself a top 10 pick to give us. Yeah, I, I think it depends on how they want to do their rebuild. Um, you know, we'll just have to see with Melbourne because they, they've picked up. They've picked up this year, but I can't imagine that they're going to be... Oh, I don't know. I can't tell what Melbourne is, is doing. They beat the Crows and... But I can't tell if that's because Melbourne are good or just because the Crows are that bad. Yeah. Probably the latter. Well, they're not the pushovers they were last year, but I don't think they're going to be making the finals this year or next or anything like that. Not just yet. Mm, But, I mean, if they... It depends how how long their plan is, I suppose, for if they'd want to trade in for a draft pick or if they'd want to trade in for an experience like a good 27-year-old or something on our list. Um, yeah. You know, like which way they want to go with their their build. Well, they did trade pick two for Dom Tyson last year, so I think they're trying to fast-track things. So they probably wouldn't be keen to trade out a 22, 23-year-old, whatever he is, for a draft pick. Mm. No doubt, again, they would probably ask for Ollie Wines. To join the first yeah, well, <laughs> oh, every, we everyone him three in times? the AFL was <laughs> probably asking for Ali Wines, but they're not getting him. No, uh, <laughs> well, next player on the list is a Levi Greenwood, someone that we've spoken about in depth on the Port Forum over the last sort of five or six years. He's 25 years old. He's played 60 games. Uh, he's kind of a halfback, kind of a tagger, kind of a midfielder. Uh, can play as a centre square, ball winner himself as well. He's a former Port boy. Um, 
how do we see him fitting in? Is he someone we might uh, have a bit of an interest in with the port background? So is is he a port Magpies player or? Yeah, he's a former port Magpies player. He went through the same system at the same time as uh, Brad Ebert. Ah, uh, yeah. I think he can play, but again, you'd probably look at him as a Cassisi replacement. But you have to ask: Do we already have those guys on the list? And if you're Andrew Moore or Ben Newton sitting in the SANFL waiting for your opportunity, how do you react to knowing that Port's going after another inside midfielder? Do you decide, oh, buggy, I'm going to West Coast or something? Yeah. Mm. Or probably the Richmond or Hawthorne. They seem to take all of our um, all of our players. No, Richmond take all of our crap players. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> True. Mm. Uh, Reese Stanley, he's another one that's uh, that's been talking about in depth on the port for him. He's 23 years old. He's played 50 games. He's a key position for him. Uh, for him. What an idiot. He's, <laughs> for a key... <laughs> <laughs> he's a key position forward and a ruck. Uh, can also play in defense. He's another SA boy. Um, we tried to get him last year, but they wanted far too much for him. Um, will it be any different this year? Well, he's out of contract, so he might not give them a choice if Port come after him with an attractive enough offer. Yeah. But personally, I think Reece Stanley is the classic athlete over footballer. I see the appeal because if he becomes the player that he has the potential to be, he would be an absolute star. But I just, I think he's one player that I can't see it happening for personally. That's not to say I'd I wouldn't write him off if he came in the door, but I wouldn't have overly high hopes either. I think everyone saw him win the uh, the hundred meter sprint, the grand final sprint twice, and uh, oh Jesus, he's two hundred centimeters and can run faster than anyone else. You know, he's going to be an absolute superstar. But I think Brad Moran showed that uh, just being tall and quick doesn't mean you can actually play footy. Yeah, one hundred percent right. Uh, the next player on the list would be Sam Reed from Sydney. He's uh, twenty two years old. He's played sixty games. He's a key position forward. Uh, can play a little bit in defence as well. Um, it looks like he's been lost behind uh, Tippett and Franklin. Yeah, well, I guess anyone really would be. The uh, what, are, what are they calling them? Like the Bondi billionaires or something? <laughs> uh, Sydney's forward line. So I suppose that might be one, uh, one side where they're going to be leaking some other players because they're... Uh, because of how much they're spending on some certain players. Yeah. I think the problem with Sam Reed is that Sydney seemed to rate him far higher than his output actually deserves. I think they gave him like a five-year five, five yeah. deal or something when he was averaging a goal and a half or something at AFL level. I don't think he's any more talented than somebody like a Lewis Johnston, but one's going to cost you a first rounder and one's going to cost you a delisted free agent pick, so... I think you've got to pick your targets. To It's what we've been doing really well. We've been picking up players who are worth more on the field than they are on the trade table. I think Sam Reid sort of going the opposite way to that. Yep. The last one that's of interest might be Scott Lysett, who's a, another former Magpie. He's 21 years old. He's played 13 games. He's another ruck uh, or key position forward. He's really built his body up. He's now got an AFL size about him. Uh, but he's always going to struggle behind uh, Dean Cox and Nick Nat Nui to get a game at uh, West Coast at the moment. Well, that's true, but Dean Cox is probably in his last year. If not this year, it'll be next year. So it'll be a battle between Scott Lysett and Callum Sinclair then, and they're sort of pretty evenly matched. So Lysett yeah. might back himself to get a permanent spot. Mm, that's not to, it's not to say he wouldn't consider coming home. As you said, he's a former Port Magpie. I think he's best mates with Sam Gray or something like that. So yep. I'm sure Port might appeal to him. It's mm. it's sort of something that if it happens, I'll sort of shrug my shoulders and say, yeah, that's all right. I'm not really either for or against it. He's a dep- he'd be depth at the moment. He could be better. We know how long rucks take. It's just sort of a easy option, I guess. Yep. I mean, because I, I think in terms of, of rucks, we need... Depth, but we don't. I don't think we particularly need a ruck for our best twenty-two. Like we've got, we've got that covered with low B and Reddit in the, you know, just like Trangove and Westoff and that around the place. Like, I'm not sure I see 
another ruck being necessary in our non-injured main team. So I'd probably prefer to just get like a 26, 27-year-old uh, who's good but cheap, you know? Yeah, I'd agree with that. That's yep. why we target somebody like Griffin, who did express some interest in coming back to South Australia a couple of years ago. So could be a realistic option, especially since Sanderlands and Clark are both playing very well. So I don't think Griffin would be in Frio's best 22 right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. I guess it really depends on how we see Jared Redden going and, and whether we think we can actually get his body right to play regular AFL footy in the future. Yeah, I mean, apart from Jared Redden, is there anyone else that's in our current reserves that would that would make a good second ruck? Or? Well, look, we'll talk about some Maggies now. Um, Benny Harron, he's probably one that might be of interest. He's 21 years old, he's... 198 centimetre utility. He's probably the SNFL version of Westhoff where he can play literally every single position on the ground. He's played everything all down the spine this year. Uh, he can definitely go in the ruck. Um, he was on the Sydney rookie list a few years ago. He could be someone that we could get pretty late in the draft. I think somebody like Haran would be the perfect uh, break glass in case of emergencies rookie key position player because, as you said, he can play anywhere. If Schultz or Trengove or Lobby, any of those guys gets injured, you can upgrade Haran for any of them and he'll sort of, hopefully, if his SANFL skills that he's shown transfer to AFL, he'll be able to come in and do a decent job in any of their positions. Yeah. Well, the next magpie to talk about is uh, Nathan Cracker. He's someone that's uh, had a bit of history with the Port Adelaide Footy Club in the past. He's 26 years old. He's a, a halfback flanker. Um, could we see the return of the crack? I'm not overly worried about all the stuff that's gone on in the past. I was filthy at him when he left and the way that he left, but that's all in the past and it's all new people in charge at the club right now anyway. So the question is, is he good enough? And his first SNFL game against the Crows was fantastic. If he had kept up that standard, I'd be saying, yes, let's definitely rookie him. But since then, he's been a little bit quieter. Yep. So I suppose I wouldn't have any problems with picking him but it just depends on how good his mm. form is if he keep if he starts playing like he did against the crows again then yes but if he keeps playing like he has the last couple of weeks then not really that fast i mean but how, I, I think... how long has he been out of the system two years two years yep. i think rookie pick only though wouldn't take him with a main draft pick i reckon we'll pick him up with the last rookie pick yeah it wouldn't we'll surprise me up. wouldn't surprise me Hmm. Another one to talk about is uh, Stevie Summerton. He's the Maggie's captain. He's 26 years old. He's 177 centimetres. He's kind of been told in the past he's you know too small, too slow, too this, too that. Um, is he worth a shot? He's in absolute career best form at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he seems to be like consistently at the top of the Magpies side in terms of form, which when you consider that... It's a list of AFL-listed players who, by all rights, would be playing in the AFL, half of them, if uh, you know, if there was any other situation going on in the AFL. Um, it's really impressive how well he's doing, really. I think Summerton's good enough to play AFL football, but maybe we're not the club for him. I think if he was on Brisbane's list right now, he would absolutely walk into their best 18. But does he get a game at Port Adelaide ahead of the guys we've mentioned before, like Moore and Newton, and even Aaron Young's only played two full mm. games and been subbed yeah. three times? My issue with Stevie Summerton is that if he's going to get a game at AFL level, it's got to be as a centre square midfielder, and I just don't see him knocking out guys like Boak and Ollie Wines and these sort of fellas at AFL level. I don't think he's got it in him to play as a small forward, unlike a Sam Gray. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with you, Cole, that he'd probably suit a different club better than us at the moment. Yeah, his height counts against him as well. 177 is not really big enough to play as a starting centre square midfielder for a top four club. No. No, that's right. I guess the other, the last player to talk about would be Jake Johansson, who's uh, of draft age this year. He debuted last year as a 16 year old. He's 170 centimetres, talking about short players. Um, he's a midfielder. He can also play in a forward pocket. He's lightning quick. He's got fantastic skills. I think he's someone that we'll be interested in come draft day. 
Yeah, I'm not worried about his height if he's a small forward. Lots of the best small forwards in the competition are 180, sub 180. Yep. It's a worry if you're a midfielder, but not for a crumbing forward. It probably helps you, if anything, because you're lower to the ground. Yep. I would love to pick up Jake Johansson with sort of, I don't know, third rounder if he slips that far. The fact that he's been injured, as sad as it is for him, might end up helping us because it means he has he's missed half the SANFL season. He won't be playing in the under-18 comp might slip under the radar a bit and be a somebody who we could pick up for less than what he should be worth. And to fill, as we've mentioned before, talking about Shane Edwards, to fill that true crumbing forward pocket role that nobody's really properly filled since God knows when. I don't even remember. God need and Johansson with their speed against opposition for against opposition defenders in a few years would be something very interesting. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, Schultz and Fess, it was fantastic to have you back on. Yeah, it was good to be back on. Great stuff. We'll get you back on throughout the year for sure. Uh, Cody, thanks for your first time on the podcast, mate. Yeah, it was good to be here. Hopefully I managed to successfully bluff that I pretended to know what I was talking about. (laughs) You did a great job. (laughs) Good stuff. Until next time, fellas, go Port Adelaide. Go okay, Port Adelaide. Power. He ignores it. He goes long to Ebert. Bouncing ball. Back of the pack. Stuart Jew. Box back there. Needs to rush it. Jew off the deck. The Jew kick. The ball. Has slowed it. The ball barracks for Port.